Jason here. Crystal has been building again and today I'm really excited to show you her latest model which is this set of hands that open up to reveal a dragonfly. There are a couple of things I really like about this model. One is the contrast of the monochrome exterior with the gray hands and the subtle decorations around the black base with the colored interior featuring some vegetation, the blue water, and of course the dragonfly itself. And the other is all of the mechanics behind the motion, which includes the opening of the hands, the lifting of the dragonfly, the flapping of its wings, and the closing of everything back up, all driven through this single crankshaft on the side of the base. So how does that all work? Here are all the major components of the drive system and as I assemble them, I'm going to explain how they all work together. We'll start by looking at the main support for the dragonfly. Here are the dragonfly's wings and they are connected to this crankshaft at the base of the support so that as the crankshaft rotates, the dragonfly's wings flap up and down. At the back of the support is this door rail plate and that slides into this channel so that it can slide up and down very easily. And it is constrained at the bottom using this cheese slope here and at the top using this cheese slope here so that its path is restricted. And this assembly is attached to the back of the base like so. Now we need a way to move that support up and down. So here we have the main drive system and this crank drives the lower axle and these three gears just transfer that rotation to the upper axle. And this eight tooth gear meshes with the gear rack to be able to move the support up and down. Now on its own, as you see, when we get to the top, because gravity is pulling that support down, we just get some skipping on the gear teeth. In order to prevent that, we're going to use a little bit of gearing trickery. We're gonna take the support out and we're going to add this 24 tooth gear to the base of it, but we're going to attach it using this friction axle pin. And that way it'll behave as a primitive clutch gear. So if we add it back into the system and we'll add the upper stopper back on. Now we're going to slide this eight tooth gear on the bottom axle over so that it will engage with that 24 tooth gear as the rack gets to the top of its drive gear. And because that 24 tooth gear is attached using the friction pin, when the lower eight tooth gear first engages with it, it's going to tr tend to push the support up instead of rotating the gear until the support gets to the top of its travel range. And then the 24 tooth gear will rotate to prevent any binding or any skipping as we saw before. Next up, we need to drive the flapping of the wings and Crystal didn't want the wings to start flapping until the dragonfly reached the apex of its travel. So here we have this 16 tooth gear here. And as the dragonfly rises, it engages with the 16 tooth gear on that crankshaft I showed you earlier in order to drive the flapping of the wings. And then when we retract the dragonfly, it disengages from that crank gear. And the last piece of motion that we need to add is the opening and closing of the hands which is achieved using a simple set of lift arms that are connected between the main support here and each of the hands. Attach the right hand here and the left hand here so that as the main support lifts up, the hands are pushed open and as it is retracted, the hands are pulled closed. That is about all there is to it. I know a few of you have asked or suggested that Crystal showcase her own models in these videos and trust me, I would let her do that if she would, but she's not really interested in making these videos. So you're stuck with me, unfortunately. As always, I hope you enjoyed the model and the video. Thanks for watching, keep on building, and I'll see you next time.